New Zealand has great natural wealth, both on the land, in the rivers, and at sea. And few species reflect that wealth and exemplify its fragility better than the long-finned eel. These increasingly rare and long-lived fish are a very important cultural resource and the world's largest eel. Together with short-finned eels, they're also a really significant fishery. But as we're about to learn, these remarkable fish require a lot of understanding if we're to manage that resource sustainably. I'm going to meet with eel expert Joseph Potangaro to learn some of the facts and history of our long-finned eels. So Joseph, how, how often do these eels get fed? Uh, normally once a day at 1.30. Oh, okay. at, um, sometimes a couple of times a day when there's school groups or tour parties. Okay. They, they seem pretty enthusiastic. They obviously know what's going on. They do, yeah. And what, what do you usually feed them? Um, it's a mixture of ox heart mints, mixed vegetables, it's goodies that uh, the kiwi would usually have, actually. Okay. And occasionally they get a special treat to the rat or, or a oh. mouse, something that's been caught in the traps in the forest. Oh, fantastic. It looks like these guys are pretty ready for their feed, eh? Oh, there you go. He's... That rat went down in one gulp by the look of it. I guess they're ready for their uh, beef heart mince. How many eel species have we got altogether in New Zealand? Uh, well, there's three species, but the, the two main ones are the, the long fin and yeah. the short fin. What's the difference between them? The size. Yeah. So the ones here are all female long fins. They grow more than a metre long. Short fins don't live as long. But probably the main one is just, uh, as the name suggests, uh, the fins. So yeah. the long fins, back fin here comes up further than the middle of its back. Okay. Whereas the short fin only goes up to about the, the middle. Okay. So that's the fin that goes right around the tail. Yeah. So tell me about their long migrations. The long fins here will start off on an inland stream usually. And at some point in their life, it could be uh, when they're 80 years old, wow. no sooner than 34, yeah. they'll get an urge to migrate. They head off, we think it's around the um, coast of Tonga in warm trenches. Wow. So maybe 6,000 kilometres. That's a heck of a trip, eh? Yeah. The short fins go up to around Samoa. And the females release the eggs, and each one can have between 1 and 20 million wow. per eel. Uh, and then the males fertilise them and the adults all die. So any eel that's taken out of the waters of New Zealand means that they haven't bred. And uh, it's been the case that over uh, more than a century that eel numbers have declined markedly to the point where the long fins, for instance, are now endangered. So how do they find their way back to New Zealand, Joseph? The eggs start floating back towards New Zealand in, in currents um, and somehow make it back. Well, a number of them do. Of course, they've got hazards along the way. It amazes me that most of these eels are already older than I am, and some of them might have another 30 to 60 years of river life here in New Zealand before they embark on their remarkable journey to the warmer waters of the Pacific to breed. And it's that remarkable life cycle that makes them such a challenge to conserve. But with improved understanding, there's no reason why rivers like this shouldn't be filled with eels just as fat and abundant in 100 years' time. 